All right. So um, just to finish up a little bit with Kepler's laws, right? We talked about how the velocity is also going to be different depending on the distances. But now also the energy <clears throat> is going to change. The potential versus the kinetic. And you remember that potential energy is your stored energy and kinetic energy is your energy of motion. When you keep that in mind, right? Wait, Miss Gonzalez. What that? Madison was about to present, so we can't see your screen anymore. All right, Maddie, I'll, I'll yeah. talk to you about it after, okay? So just disconnect. Let me know if you guys can see now. Can you guys see it? We only need to see a small screen. Yeah, it's like a small screen, like everyone else's screen. It's not fully presented. You, you can pin it. Yeah, you can just get that. Well, if I pin it, it goes crazy. Yeah, now it's working. All right. All right. So, like I was saying, right, energy is going to be transferred between potential energy and kinetic energy as we move through our orbit over and over again. Right? Kinetic energy is the energy of motion, which should make sense to you why the highest kinetic energy is when we are closest to the sun. Right? So our highest kinetic energy is going to happen when we're closest to the sun because of the fact that there's more of a gravitational pull, which means that we're going to increase in our orbital velocity, which means that we are going to be moving faster, and therefore we are having our kinetic energy or the energy of motion being the highest. Okay, when kinetic energy is at its highest, potential energy is at its lowest. You cannot have them both be high. You cannot have them both be low. They are actually opposites of each other. Okay, so when we are closer to the sun, all right, the potential energy is going to be the lowest and the kinetic energy is going to be the highest. So that's during winter. During summer, our potential energy is going to be the highest because we're furthest away from the sun, which means that we are moving slower in our orbit, okay, and our uh, stored energy will be much higher, okay. That's the last little bit about this before we move on. Okay, so let's move on to the parts of our solar system. All right, if you're following along, we're on review book page 48, which again, you can find on the, uh, if you didn't buy it, which is totally fine, you could find it on Google Classroom. All right, we know this already. The sun is the center of our solar system. We know this, we have a heliocentric model, right? We also know that the inner planets are known as terrestrial planets and the outer planets are known as uh, the Jovian planets, right? So it goes the inner planets, which are Mars, Venus, Mercury, Earth, right? Not necessarily in that order, right? And then you have that asteroid belt, which actually breaks up the terrestrial and the Jovian planets, okay? And the Jovian planets, J for Jovian, J for Jupiter. That's how you want to remember it, okay, are the outer planets. Now... The inner planets all have things in common. The outer planets all have things in common, not just that they're closer, not just that they're further away, okay? The terrestrial planets are solid rock-like structures, okay? Whereas the Jovian planets are not. The inner planets are much smaller. The outer planets are much bigger, okay? A lot of these comparisons you can look on Earth Science Reference Table, page 15, and see, okay? You do not necessarily have to memorize this. What you do need to memorize is the fact that it's the terrestrial versus the Jovian. That's why I keep saying J for Jovian, J for Jupiter, because Jovian planets start with Jupiter. Okay? Oh, my mic is Can I move on, guys? No way. Okay.
Okay, thank you. No problem. Wait, Miss Gonzalez, I need a little more time, please. Okay, not a problem. Okay, so like I said, when you are looking at these planets, right, you have to also look at what they're composed of, all right? The inner planets are solid rock or rock-like structures, okay? The outer planets are somewhat of gases um, and the last two so Uranus and Neptune are actually made up of frozen materials wait so the four furthest away from the Sun are made up of the lighter elements the four that are furthest away yes Um, it's, so I learned that when I say like because uh, Saturn and Jupiter is, have maybe minor environment gas, so we cannot let any sort of the the as, uh, as astronomy as like you set something on it, you cannot land on it. What do you mean? Like if you send a spaceship or something, you cannot land on the Saturn. Or Jupiter. Right. Right, because they're made up of gases. You'd fall technically straight through. Well, all right. Yeah. Okay. So, like we said, there are two different kinds of planets. There are the terrestrial planets, and there are the Jovian planets. Okay? Simple and easy. Right? Look at the size differences. Right? The terrestrial planets are much, 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 much smaller than the Jovian planets. Now, this does not include Pluto. This is one of the reasons why Pluto is the odd man out and he's not really a full planet. Does not follow the pattern, okay? Right, so the terrestrial planets we said are the four inner planets in the solar system, right? They are going to be much smaller in size and mass. Um, technically, Earth is the largest out of the four of them. Okay. Some typical things that they have in common is that they have rocky surfaces. Okay. Um, the only problem is, is that the surface of Venus we cannot really see uh, because they have this dense cloud cover over it that's actually creating a greenhouse effect on the planet Venus. Okay. Um, the only way that we can see it is using infrared radiation um, and different types of wavelengths. Okay, so it's not really pictures. Whereas we can send satellites around the other planets and get pictures sent back to us and we can see that they have rocky surfaces. But again, Venus has this really thick, dense cloud cover. Um, if you've ever seen the new version of Kong, the movie, uh, when they're flying towards the island and it's that giant storm cloud around it that they really can't see through. That's why they have to fly through it. Um, that's pretty much what's happening outside of Venus. So it's got so many uh, issues going on there. It basically created these greenhouse gases, which created a greenhouse on the planet of Venus. So that thick cloud cover is basically just pollution, right, and greenhouse gases. All right. Ah, the Jovian planets. The Jovian planets are the larger ones. Jupiter and uh, Saturn actually do both have rings. All right. There's one characteristic of Jupiter that you should know about, which is that it has this giant red spot on it called the Great Red Spot. Okay, you should already know this. You guys learned this a long time ago. Okay. Ah. Uh, they are much, much, much larger in mass and size compared to the terrestrial planets, right? They also have much lower average density. And again, all of this information is on your reference table. So you do not need to memorize it. <clears throat> now they put it in terms of how much, uh, when you look at reference table page 15, they put like the masses in terms of how big it is compared to Earth, 
because one, we live on Earth and you can actually physically see it, and two, because Earth is the largest terrestrial planet. Okay? So all of these planets have rings. Okay? Saturn is not the only one, but you can see Saturn's rings through a telescope. Okay? Uh, most of these are made, or all of these are made up of mostly gases. There's really no solid surface at all. Okay, so you have to be very careful with these because, you, like she has said, you can land on them. Okay, because there is no solid surface whatsoever. So these are the gaseous Jovian planets. All right. The further you get away from the sun, the colder it's going to get, which is why the outer planets are also colder, like Neptune and Uranus. All right, so here they are in order. Wait, Miss Gonzalez, I wasn't done with the last slide. Thank you. Four, four sentences. Whenever you're ready. Wait, what are the what are the um the terrestrial ones? Terrestrials are the inner planets, so Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. Look at the size difference. Like these are the terrestrial planets over here on the left. And then look how much larger these four are. And then there's the dwarf planet, Pluto. Okay. Just another picture. Okay, so how small are we in comparison to the rest? All right. We are extremely small. So if you were to put this into, you don't have to copy this down. But if you were to put this into perspective, the sun is like if you took a black garbage bag and you blew it up, okay? Mercury is like the size of a coffee bean. Venus is like the size of a small blueberry. Earth is about the same size of a small blueberry. Mars is the size of a pea, right? Jupiter is like a large grapefruit. Saturn is a large orange. Uranus is like a kiwi. Neptune is like a nectarine, which is a small, uh, a small orange, okay? And Pluto is a grain of rice. So in comparison to all them, something I also want you to notice is look at all of these. So the sun is right here, right? The inner planets are on top of each other. They're not actually on top of each other, but they're super duper close. And then as you get further away from the sun, they get, the planets get further and further apart from each other, Okay. All right, so this is actually a really cool video. Let's see. So just keep in mind, these are the sizes. Look how much larger Neptune is. Oh my god, they're huge. Remember, that's 99% of our solar system. And these are all different stars. Look how tiny the sun is compared to all of them. There's Beetlejuice. Thank you. 
So you remember when I said that the sun is a medium-sized star in comparison to all of all of them, right? It is tiny. That last little one here to show you in comparison, that is our sun in comparison to all of these other larger stars. How scary is that, right? Right? This video is just to show you uh, pretty much how we are in comparison to the rest of the universe, okay? It's just to put it into perspective, guys, because you don't realize how small we actually are. So we start in the Himalayas and we're going to pull back. So those are all the unnatural satellites. Those are the satellites that we put into space. Okay, so now at the bottom here, it's going to tell you how many light years we've traveled. So right now we've only traveled about an hour comparison. There's one day. There's one year. That's our galaxy, and now we're at 100,000 years away. There's one million years. Those are all the galaxies that are nearby. And so far, that's how much we have mapped in space. That's five billion years ago. Okay, so this where it says light from a younger universe, that's called cosmic background radiation. That's one of the uh, after effects of the Big Bang. That's how we know that the Big Bang actually happened. Our galaxy. There's 
is our sun. I think the period would be over. In a second, yeah. I just want you to see this real quick. It'll be over in 15 seconds. Okay. Right. So the moral of the story is, guys, we aren't even a speck on an ant in comparison to the entire universe. Okay? Just letting you know, we're basically, we are not even that size. All right. You guys have a good day. I will see you tomorrow. If you have any questions, we have extra help today from 5 to 5.30. Miss Gonzalez. Miss Gonzalez. What's the matter, Annalise? I have a question. Sure. So basically, I'm going to come to extra help today, but um, what you call, what you mean? I have a video that I saw that I found really